It came as a sudden surprise last week when the Boston Herald announced it had been sold to Gatehouse Media. But apparently the writing had been on the wall for months. Longtime Boston Herald publisher Pat Purcell sat down with me this afternoon to say it was the hardest thing he's ever done. At the end of the summer, it was it was pretty clear. We were looking at the cash. You know, every day you look at the cash, and, and we started talking to some people, and they said, "The worst thing you can do is to wait till the very end." Even your front page on the wall, we're still alive. You're such a fighter. How how could you back down now? When you're running out of money, and you want to keep people employed, you do what you have to do. Purcell's reported $4.5 million deal with Gatehouse Media requires him to file bankruptcy and shed debt and pension liabilities. He says Gatehouse plans to keep most of the Herald's 228 employees, but when asked about specific reporters and editors, he said simply, I don't know. As for the status of pensions... So they may not get the entire amount, but they're going to get a good amount. One of the other things you said to me five years ago is that you were considering going paperless. Was it a mistake that you didn't? No. Um, just like the advertising um, arena. Paperless, online, it's, it's pennies on the dollar. Um, the ad revenue in the newspaper industry has gone from $65 billion in 2000 to 18 billion now. And that has rippled through the entire industry. Google didn't exist in 1998. Now they're doing 70 billion. Your old colleague and the person you bought this paper from, Rupert Murdoch, is still at it every day, even saying something outrageous yesterday <laughs> about sexual harassment. What was it like working with him, for him even? You know, pretty much a thrill of a lifetime. Rupert knew the industry upside down, backwards, forwards. It was Unbelievable, and one of the smartest, hardest-working guys you'll ever meet. So over the years, as you look back, as, as your tenure at the helm of the Herald, um, you've had some ups and some downs. What were the greatest ups for you? I think on the news side, it would have to be um, when the Red Sox finally won the World Series. We were prepared. We were selling about 250,000 copies a day. We sold three quarters of a million. The single worst day um, was when um, the Red Sox beat the Yankees after being down three nothing, and the Victoria Snellgrove um, was shot and died. Our coverage was graphic. After seeing this front page, Purcell says readers called to complain and started canceling subscriptions in droves. I said, I think we went over the top, and we need to apologize. So immediately um, that afternoon we did um, to the family, to our readers, and then the next day in paper we, we apologized. This week, a week filled with so much anguish, Purcell was touched to see a Boston Globe op-ed penned by publisher John Henry that reads in part, I hope that the people of Boston will recognize and celebrate what Pat Purcell brought to our great city. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I mean, it was so... Um, sincere and heart, I mean, it was generally heartwarming. And one more personal note. Back when the Boston Red Sox went up for sale, the Globe and the Herald were tussling for exclusives, and the Globe got more from eventual buyer John Henry. So I said to him, when, when that happens, if you do that and you hand something off to the Globe, we're going to hit you in the face with a two-by-four. After the deal was done, he walked into the dining room with Jason to my office, and he said, Pat, I'd like to bury this between us. So what's on the horizon for you, Pat? I've been stepping back from the day-to-day -day a little bit over the last couple of years. It's been a great ride. No regrets. I have to say, you could just tell genuinely he was even anxious when I walked in because he had been so emotional all week. He, he knew he was going to be, and his um, uh, communications person said to me, you know, please don't make him cry. And I said, well, I'm not going to try to make him cry, but, I mean, you could tell he was genuinely emotional. I mean, he, he was telling me a lot of stuff before and afterwards about... Um, working with Rupert Murdoch and how that sale came about in, in 1994, he said, you know, I didn't know anything about being a publisher of a newspaper. And he said, I don't have the money, he would said to Rupert. And Rupert said, don't worry, come down, come down to L.A., we'll work it out, it'll all be fine. And, uh, you know, he, he 
uh, Rupert handed him a lot of helpers along the way too, and, and it was fine for. And he he did say to me, you know, five years ago when they moved into that building that um, he was gonna he was gonna push it to the end, and he he, he wasn't gonna give up. So the fact that he had to is really heartrending. We don't need to look any further than, than the Boston Globe harassment story to understand why we needed two, news, a two newspaper town in Boston, and we need it now more than ever. Um, and I did, I, I, I said to you, I, watching that piece, it reminded me of, of when the Boston Phoenix, where Dan and I worked, uh, went bankrupt in 2013. Um, and, and in that case, we so was not able to be found. I think we need to give him some credit for finding some solution. We, we tend to think of a better, is there a better yeah. solution? Any solution is better for the, for, uh, the employees at the Herald, even if it's not quite exactly what they want financially. Um, yeah, obviously because the Phoenix had to fold. So, so. Right, and, and then everybody's sort of out of work. Uh, there are no good answers at this point for media, and as he talked about, the, the financial implications of what's going on right now in the business are just terrifying. Um, anybody who's sort of sticking it out, you're one of the good guys. You know, um, you have to give him credit for keeping it alive to this point and for handing it off to a company that is apparently committed to keeping it alive, even if it will be smaller. Um, that, what, a, what an interview that was. He was so emotional about it, and uh, you, you really couldn't help but feel for him as he, he prepares to walk away from this. Um, he's absolutely right about there being very little value in digital advertising. Uh, I wonder if Gatehouse might do something like make it a free print daily. Which is what you've um, been suggesting. Which is what I've been suggesting. And uh, somebody said to me today, maybe a free afternoon print daily to mm -hmm. give people on their, their way home on their commute. Um, I think that there are ways of saving the Herald and continuing forward. Uh, I'm sure Gatehouse wouldn't have been interested in it if they didn't think that. So, you know, all credit to Purcell for keeping right. it going as long as he did. I guess um, I'm going to say what, what was my observation when the news first broke last week is that it loses then the unique quality of the publication. So it had a certain kind of vibe and feel, and that's... You know, it's not just having more newspapers. I mean, it is good, but to have one that stand out so that you have choices, really. Um, and so that's that's a loss that I don't even know that we can understand right now in the moment. Yeah. The problem is I don't think it differentiated itself enough. And it, what it ended up being was the Boston Globe light. Mm -hmm. And you, you take... By contrast, you look at um, the New York Post, right? What the New York Post has done is differentiate itself in two ways. It's really developed a strong, conservative voice on the op-ed pages with fairly sophisticated writers. Um, shorter pieces, but solid pieces. Um, and then, on the news side, it's gone full tabloid, flashy headlines, funny headlines, bordering on inappropriate headlines. <laughs> but what it's done is it's created a niche, so it really markets itself towards conservative readers on the one hand and people who are interested in the flashy, the mm -hmm. gossip, the People magazine side of things, um, the page six, right? We don't have an equivalent of that at the Herald anymore. And instead, it's just, like I said, Boston Globe light, and it doesn't give people a reason to buy it. One I, of the I, things I, that, that, I, that I think, though, is con that are connected to both the Herald and I'll take your criticism – are that they really reflect the community, the localness. Mm -hmm. yes. And so that's one of the things that I will miss because that's what the Post does. You have, you, you, that's a New York paper, inappropriate mm -hmm. headlines and all, right? Right. Yeah, so that's, that's what we mean. I, yeah. I don't know mm -hmm. that I'd call it globe light, but I agree with you that it ought to be more explicitly conservative and smarter. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm.